Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. My name's Stephen and I, I'm, I'm a recovered alcoholic. And uh, just before I start on like uh, 10, 11, and 12, I know last week that I had uh, gone over the 12, the, the 12 promises of that are contained after the ninth step. And after those promises comes the statement, are these extravagant promises? We think not. They are being fulfilled among us, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly, but they will always materialize if we work for them. So now I've done the, not, I've done the work that, enti- that like gets me to the point where maybe I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, you know. I'm setting forth on a new way of life. And uh, according to, like, I have... I've hopefully recovered from that hopeless state of mind and body by doing all that work, by doing the first nine steps of the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. I've begun to see the light, and I've gotten over the obsession that was ruling my life at one time. I've established my contact. I've started to establish a contact with a higher power, and now we get into the maintenance steps, the steps that really, like on a daily basis, continue to help me to, like, to go forward in this program. And... uh, the tenth step, like it says, it says, like, when I am wrong, promptly admit it, you know. And that was something, I think I said it when I first started speaking, if you had enough evidence to convict me, I would admit to anything, you know what I mean? That's, that's no problem for me. Admitting to things like when cornered is no problem. The problem with the tenth step was that, like, when I knew I had done wrong, it was up to me to correct, to, like, immediately set things straight, you know, and... uh those are the things that I have to look at for myself because I know right from wrong, you know, and uh, I've always had an idea of what I, – I knew what was right for you, you know what I mean, or what might, right, what might be right for me could also be wrong for you, you know. But by practicing this program, I've begun to fit myself to conditions as they are. Like, I've, I've begun to fit into the stream of life, like, you know. I've, I've tried to become – a useful, productive member of society, which is something I have never really aspired to be, to be completely honest. But today, I am. Today I am. But the thing I have to be aware of is, like, I have to hold myself to a certain, like, to a certain set of standards, you know. And uh, my mother tried to explain this to me a long time ago. The other thing is I cannot hold people to the standards that I hold myself to because it upsets me at times that, like, you don't behave like I do. You know what I mean? And, like, that is something I also have to be aware of, you know. There is no, uh, like, there's no piousness. There's no righteousness to any of this, to be completely honest. I'm just one guy trying to do the best I can in this thing. They tell you that love and tolerance is our code, you know. That's what I have to remember. And uh, it's very easy for me to be loving and tolerant in AA because I can be like, well, that guy, you know, that guy, that they're trying to help themselves or whatever. It's really easy to come into Alcoholics Anonymous for an hour a day and be like, be a great guy, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's very insulated in here. I don't have a lot to deal with. But the true test of how I am living my life is how I conduct myself outside of the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. What do, like, my coworkers, people on the street, what do they think of me? Do you know what I mean? Like, what impression do I leave as I – and I hope, I hope to leave a positive impression. Do I always do that? No. There are times my arm flies up in the, in the driver's side window of my truck on the way to work. You know what I mean? All those – like, because you don't know who I am at times. You know what I mean? I am – like, I'm entitled to drive like that, you know? Like, that's, I got to get to work. You're in my way. Nobody's in my way. When I really think about it, when I take the time, like, life is not a NASCAR race either, as much as I would really like for it to be that way, you know what I mean? That's not the way it is. And uh, I have to remember that everything is exactly the way that it is supposed to be. Because, like, I could be selfish. I can be dishonest, you know what I mean? All... 
like I am capable of doing any of those things at any time. Those are the things that I have to be aware of. I can be hurtful to other people, you know, like my mouth, like I said very early on, I'm, I got a really quick mouth. And at times things come out, and uh, it hurts. Word, a lot of things I say are a lot more hurtful than like some of the some of the things I could do with my hands. You know, that's what I have to remember, and uh, I have to look at all these things as I go through life. And uh, I have a funny story to tell about this. I had been sober a couple of years, and uh, there was a, there's an individual at work, and uh, him and I have never seen eye to eye on anything, and. Uh, they tell me, like, I really can't bear animosity towards anybody, you know. But one day, I let it all fly, you know. We were in the room, and there's all our other coworkers are there. And I voiced my opinion as to what I honestly thought of this individual. And uh, he said some things about me. And I, I explained to him that, like, if he, if he wished to make it personal, we could take care of it at another time and place, you know, because that's grounds for dismissal. Now... I come to find out, like, I spent that weekend thinking about what I had said and what I had done, because this happened Friday afternoon before I left work. Now, he didn't have a good weekend either, I come to find out. He was afraid that I was coming to his house to get him. Now, my, my immediate response to that was, well, if he, if, that, if he knew that could happen, why didn't he just keep his mouth shut? But the honest part of it was I had no right to say to say the things that I had said. And on Monday morning, like I gotta swallow I gotta swallow my justification, my pride, and I had to walk up to him and say, Listen, we got a long time to go here and for the way I the way I did things, I am sorry, you know. Like I I have no right to do those things. I am nobody. Like they tell you, I'm criticizing, I didn't tell him, you know, I didn't tell him I was criticizing God's handiwork, but that's really what I was doing, you know what I mean? I was making myself feel better at his expense. As far as this, this goes, there are like, here's what I try to remember. It's absolute honesty, unselfishness, love, and purity. Now, like, those are the four ideals, four absolutes, four things I am striving through, through working this program to get to. Now, the only guy I know of that ever had those things, he uh, got holes through his hands and his feet. I'll never be there. Like, I understand that. But at the end of my day, I have to ask myself, according to those things, that's what I use as, like, the parameters of how, of how I in my daily life, how honest was I? How unselfish was I? You know, how how pure how pure were my thoughts? You know what I mean? Like because I got quite an active little mind too. You know, and uh, that's I have to look at that because like I can do a lot of things to make myself feel better at the expense of other people. That's what I have to look at. And the other part is how loving was I? You know what I mean? I'm not talking about like to people I know or like, uh, you know, my family. And like, I have to ask myself those questions regarding my family, but it has to do with how I conducted myself as I went through the day, you know? Like, who was I saying, like, come on, let's get move. you know what I mean? Get moving, get out of my, like, get out of my way, things like that. Those are not, that's not, that's not absolute love, you know? That's like absolutely being annoyed for no reason. And I understand that today. That's really overvaluing myself in this grand scheme of things, you know. And, like, the, that's that's what I try to do at the end of my day, you know. I know about, like, self-seeking, self-pity, dishonesty, all those things. But I try to use that as, the, as the, the barometer of, like, how I am conducting myself. And like I said, I haven't – when I left my house this evening, the hedges in front of my house weren't on fire. There were no voices telling me to, to come up here. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just trying to do the best I can with, like, the limited abilities that I have. But as I continue along, I seem, I seem to be getting better the more effort I put into this program, you know? Now, as far as 
sought through prayer and meditation to improve my conscious contact with uh, God as I understand him and hit knowledge of his will for me and the power to carry it out. Like, I used to think meditation was like a really hokey thing, you know. Like, you were never going to get me to sit still and chant or hum or do any of those things. You know, I mean, that's really good for those, you know, people in the boot, whatever, whatever they are into, that is not my cup of tea, you know. And uh, <clears throat> somebody, I was exposed to it, and I will be honest, like, I had become open-minded enough at the time to try it, but, like, that is not my thing. I, I go along the lines of, now, there's a bunch of prayers that come before the 11th step in the big book, right? I'm, ask, I'm saying to myself, like, I can't manage my life. You do it for me, please, you know? And uh, I'm, asking, I'm asking God to get all those things that stand in my way of being useful to him and to my fellow man out of the way, you know? Now, like, it's really easy to mouth those words. Now, the meditation part is to stop, be still, and think about what's going on, you know. And uh, I try every day, like, to get up early, say my prayers, and stop stop for, like, five, you know, five minutes before I, I have a whole little routine of things I have to do in the morning due to medical conditions and things like that. But I try beforehand and to think about, like, What's going to go on today? You know what I mean? How can I be of service? Like, what is like, wh what did I leave? What in thinking last night? What do I have to do today? Too like, I asked for the help to set right like the things that I know are bothering me from yesterday to car to car like to carry forth the message that was given to me, and I asked for the help, the willingness all these things, but like I'm saying, it'd be really easy to say, okay, God, you know, now, like, let's go, I got to get to work, you know what I mean, like, it's, come on, it's my, you know, it's not that way, I have to consciously stop myself and just be still for a little while, which is not an easy thing, like, I'm wound up, like, a, I'm, I'm a pretty hyperactive little guy, you know, I like to bounce off the walls and things like that, and as time has gone on, I have been able to do this because, like, what I am really striving for here through this program is the ideal to grow closer to my higher power, you know, to like to be willing at all times to do these things, you know. And uh, they tell me pr prior to this step, like, I've ceased fighting anyone or anything, even alcohol. That is what I have to remember. Like, I'm actually on a new plane. Like, by the time I get here, Hopefully, I'm on firm footing, and I know where I'm going, you know. And uh, they also talk about, like, the part about this I have to remember is, like, I can't rest on my laurels. What I did yesterday is not going to do me any good today, you know what I mean? Like, talking talking yesterday to God, like, to God my higher power, isn't going to do anything for me today. Each day, I have to do these things. Like, I have to do these things for myself, like, to cat to carry forth what I've set out to do, you know, to be of service, to be a good person. Like, ultimately, that's been my experience with this. You know what I mean? Like, my higher power wants me to be a decent human being. You know what I mean? Not, like, not, not a self-righteous, self-centered little SOB like I was when I showed up on the doorstep of Alcoholics Anonymous. So if I do these things and I realize, like, and I ask and I sit still and listen, sometimes, sometimes, like, I get divine inspiration, you know, but uh, the thing I have to do with my divine inspiration is I call Lester, you know. I talk to Lester. I talk, I usually, I'm talking to somebody, like, in the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous early in the morning, you know. On my way to work, I had a friend in, who, who was residing in North Carolina. I would speak to him, you know, and, uh, like, some of those things help me to get my day centered, you know. And they they talk about, like, it's thy will, not mine be done. And as I say, in worldly clamors at times, it's like my will, 
You know what I mean? Me, 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 me. You know what I mean? And I, I think like this sometimes. He's a little busy. You know what I mean? So, like, let me just help him out with this little issue. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll thank me for it later on, you know, because I, there's a lot of people. You know what I mean? I'm not the chosen one, so he's probably busy with something else. That's not the way it is. Sometimes, even during the day, like, I just have to stop and be still. One of the biggest things they told me very early on was sometimes doing nothing was the hardest thing to do, like to learn to, learn to be able not to react, you know, because uh, it, this was explained to me as a kid too. As soon as you said something to me, I, I raised up and I, I shot right back, you know. It's a, like today I try to think about does it need to be said, does it need to be said right now, and does it need to be said by me? Like, what, what, why am, I, why am I about to do this? You know what I mean? Do I always do this? No. There are times, like, you know what I mean? I am. I'm important, you know? And, like, just ask public service, you know? What I, like, ask my boss. That's, that's where I get into, into trouble. When I stop and I think about being of service, like, that's, that's my purpose, you know? I, I'm collecting a salary to do a job, you know? They don't need my input on like the, the management issues of how things should be run at work. But at times I feel the need to correct things, you know, to be the to be like to to be the voice for everybody at work. That's not my place either. That's like really blowing myself up into something that I'm really not. I'm just one guy there trying to do the best job I can and like to lead by example. That's the best thing. Like that's what I have to remember, you know. It's very easy for me to tell you, like, follow me. It's a lot harder for me to do the things to make you want to follow me, you know. Like, that's, that's what I have to strive for, you know. And uh, this prayer and meditation, like, I can't stress it, like, enough, you know. It's one of those things at the beginning, like, I used to mouth the words, you know what I mean? Like, please, God, don't let me get in trouble. Keep me safe today, you know what I mean? Keep me out of my own way. Today, like... I know that I have to I have to put my heart and soul into this like that uh what I am doing is like I am asking for his help, you know. And uh I want to clear something up. Like I was talking to somebody last night. I would actually love to tell you that my best thinking has gotten me my seat here. That honestly isn't what it, my here's what my best thinking will get me. Probably a life sentence in Marion, Illinois, is what my best thinking will achieve, you know. It's God. It's God got me to Alcoholics Anonymous, you know what I mean? That's, that's how I got here. I have to remember that. And in the beginning, I had no idea, you know, because, like, I was still very full of myself. Today, it's, it's the grace of my higher power that has got me to where I am and has given me all the gifts that I have. Like I was saying last week, there is, a, you know, I'd love to tell you that, like, you know, I have a house, I have a, I got, I got a wife, I got a, I got a, like a, I bought my first brand new Harley Davidson right off the showroom floor in recovery, you know. I'd love to tell you that those are all the things that make, uh, excuse me, being sober the big deal that it is. That's not what it's all about. I have a soul today, like like uh, Ron said before. Like, I am somebody. You know what I mean? I'm not that person that uh, I I had built myself up to be in my head. You know, like I wanted to be like John Wesley Harden or uh, like Jesse James, one of those guys. You know what I mean? I wanted to be one of those like great great Western heroes. Like you know, like uh, that's really how I how I looked at myself, you know what I mean? Those would be really good things to be. Today, like, I, I said it early on, what my father did, like, the things I thought were so square and so corny growing up, those are the hardest things to do in life. The things I did as an active alcoholic, any numbskull can do, myself included, you know what I mean? Uh, fueled up with alcohol and other substances, there's nothing that, like, I can't think or do. You know, it's a lot harder to be useful in the grand scheme of things, to try to be a good person. You know what I mean? To be looking out, like, for, for my fellow man. 
you know, to be of service to people. You know what I mean? Not just to be a taker from life. And, like, that that's the biggest thing I get from my conscious contact with my higher power. Now, the other part is, too, praying only for knowledge of his will for me, right? Because, like, I'm just like everybody else, you know. As a little kid, I was like, God, cure me. You know what I mean? If If I don't have to take insulin injections anymore, I'll be really happy, you know. Like, could you help me? And, like, those things are never going to come to be, you know. Like, I don't, I don't understand that. Like, at eight years old, you get very agitated by the fact that the, you can't get what you ask for, you know. But today, I, un- I have an idea of what God's will is for me, you know. It's to be a good person. It's to try. It's to try to carry this message, you know, that, uh, like, from where I was... To where I am requires, all it requires is the willingness to follow a few simple rules. You know what I mean? A couple of propositions on how to get sober and stay sober, you know? Like, that's what I got to remember and uh, where it all came from, you know? Like, that it's, this is really from, from God, you know what I mean? This program is God-given. And like I said, like, I only do revivals, seeing as we're in the upper room here, I only do revivals for large crowds, so we, uh, like, we didn't have, I didn't have to stand up at the pulpit tonight. But uh, I'm no preacher. I don't think, I don't think really that's my calling in life is to be, to be a preacher. I had a hard enough time being an altar boy. <laughs> but, like, it's just... It's to be of service, like God's God's will for me, as I understand it. Like they told me, there will be nothing that will happen today that my higher power and I cannot handle together. And uh, this is really leading me towards the 12th step of this program. That like I've had a spiritual awakening, you know, and uh, I try to practice these. I try to carry the message to alcoholics and practice these principles in all my affairs. Now. I don't even know where I heard this, but like like I say, nothing I've ever said in an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting is a, is original. You know what I mean? I may have added some of my words to it or like put my own slant on it, but somebody explained to me that uh, religion is for people that are afraid of going to hell, and spirituality is for people that have been to hell and don't want to go back there. And uh, I, I, I've said it, I wasn't afraid of shoveling coal, you know, like I figured I, I couldn't be eternally damned, I might have to, I may have to spend a little bit of time in purgatory, but it didn't really, that never really bothered me, but I, my spiritual awakening has not been like, a, like the jokes I made some, sometimes in my talk here, like it has not been of the white light kind, you know what I mean? I've never been down on my knees and uh, heard any voices. I've never seen I've never seen the skies open up, a hand come down, it, none none of those things. But like I have I have had the spiritual experience of the learned kind. My psychic change occurred by like they told me I could not think my way into right acting, but I could act my way into right thinking, and by following the program of Alcoholics Anonymous as it was laid out, my actions have become a lot better, you know, and as I think about it, like I try to explain this to people, the things that were acceptable to me in 1994, like as newly sober, you know what I mean, even those things, like I was doing enough to get by, like, you know, just enough as not to be in trouble, I came here to stay out of trouble with the law, I was just I was just skirting, like trying to stay out of trouble, you know. And if there was a corner to cut or there was a way for me to get ahead, make myself look better, I, you know, I would, take, I would take the easier, softer way. Today, I understand the easier, softer way is to follow the program exactly as it is laid out, you know. And uh, from, all, from all, the, like, all the pain that I've had to go through in growing up in Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, like, I've reaped the benefits for it, you know. My life, like I've said, is beyond my wildest dreams today, to be really honest. I have a good life, you know. And uh, the part about this is, like, I try 
we were somebody was talking to me before the meeting about like uh like promoting myself for like sponsorship. I've never done that. Like since I've come to Alcoholics Anonymous, like I I understand the idea that it's based on attraction rather than promotion, you know, because I I've known people and anybody that like wanted to preach to me or anything like that, I was like that's really good for you, but now you can go stay over there, you know what I mean? Like that's don't tell me what to do, show me what to do. The people that I have learned the most from in Alcoholics Anonymous have honestly showed me by their actions how how to live this program, you know. And that that's the biggest thing because uh I don't have a high success rate as uh at being a sponsor. My the most successful thing about my my trying to be of service to other alcoholics is I have been able to remain sober since I came since I have come to Alcoholics Anonymous, you know. And uh like a lot of people and I'll tell you something, in the beginning I was like I was like, do it or else. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Don't don't challenge me. You know what I mean. You don't know who you're dealing with. You know what I mean. And uh, that individual, you know, he he left of his own volition. You know, like he uh, he did he wasn't he wanted to go do more research and development on his own. But uh, that's where I was at at the time. I was like, you know, you better do this and you better do that. And uh, I was one of those people, you know. It's it's very easy to sound good and to like to try to be understanding, but then when the guy when the guy wants to do his own thing, I'm like like I get agitated, you know, and I'd be like, you know, and there'd be confrontation and uh instead of just being like accepting it for what it was, I had to like stress my point, you know, like be insistent. And that did me like it didn't either one of us any good, you know. That's not much. Of, that's not much much of a message to really be carrying, you know. Because early on, somebody gave me a book, and uh, I, I always thank this guy because he's not in the fellowship of AA. But uh, the book was about a guy who had been some of the places I had been, known a lot of the same people, and he found he became born again. And his idea of converting people was get on your knees or else, you know. And he, he beat he beat several of the guys he used to hang around with into finding the Lord. And I was thinking, you know what? That's a pretty good idea. That's how I'll go about this thing. You know what I mean? Get it or I'll beat the tar out of you. And like I like I've said, I'm not a tough individual. You know what I mean? I can be I can be menacing. I can like I can build myself up, to, but like that doesn't do me any good. That's there's no message in that. You know what I mean? Like, do it or else. Yeah, th that's how, and I, I never liked that for myself. And that was early on, you know. I had I was probably sober like two years at the time, and I was like, all right, now I'm ready. You know what I mean? Here I go. I, I got it. I was on fire. You know what I mean? I was, I was really ready. Like, the old boy was on fire, all right, you know. And uh, <laughs> we all know what happens to the old boy who's on fire, right? He, sometimes the fire gets doused. And you got to get it relit. And uh, I've had several experiences. Like, there, there's a lot of stories. Like, the biggest thing I've really tried to do before, like, I've always tried to, like, the one thing I can understand is the desire to pick up a drink, you know, like to call it quits. It's like to, and I've always said that to people. Like, my interests are varied, right? I don't believe, like... When I originally came to Alcoholics Anonymous, the only guys I wanted to know had to have tattoos, they had to have motorcycles, you know what I mean? They had to be just like me because I figured they could offer me something, you know. I didn't want to learn anything from anybody else. And the guy that was my first sponsor explained it to me very simply. I better believe that everybody here was able to do something that I by myself could not do. And uh, I've tried, like... They tell you about the countless trips to uh, hospitals, jails, asylums. I've done – this This is the part – I'm going to be really honest. I got to tell you this stuff because it's part, of, it's part of carrying a message, but the things I do are for myself because, like, that's why I've done these things, you know. I really wish there was, like, 
some esteem, you know, like some kind of esteem to be had. But the esteem I get from doing it is I've stayed sober. And hopefully, hopefully, somebody, somebody may have heard something. You know what I mean? I may have, like, somebody may, may have got something out of what I said. If they didn't, like, that's okay because I was there. I took a guy one time because I lived in an Oxford house, and I knew this guy, and uh, he said he was ready. And uh, I sat with him in the emergency room, and I offered him some suggestions on how to make sure that they would keep him. And uh, if that he, he was willing, he was willing to do it that evening, right? And uh, it was it was like three. It was late in the, it was late in the evening when I got. It was early in the morning when I actually got out of the hospital after getting him admitted, and I come to find out that he uh, he decided the next morning that he really didn't want to be there. He, you know what I mean? And, like, the biggest thing I can say about excuse me, about things like that is it kept me sober. It made me grateful not to, like, it's not to be that guy. I had been him at one time. You know what I mean? I was willing to do anything as to, like, not have to get sober. You know, like, I would do anything besides come to AA. You know what I mean? I was willing to do, like, I just did not want to come back here. And uh, I can identify with those things, you know? And, like, I got to remember that. Like, I'm, I'm now, I got 12 steps. I'm 12 steps away from picking up my next drink. But if I ever forget where I, where I came from, like, I could be back there very quickly. I've done, uh, I think I told you this already, I did, I, I've done, I like correctional facilities types of things, you know, because uh, part of the reason I'm here is because of the law, you know what I mean? That's how I got, that's how I got lit, that's how the fire got lit again. The judge was like, you can go to the Gray Bar Hotel or you can go to AA, and I was like, I'll give AA another try, Your Honor. <laughs> and uh, i I go to jail, like, my thing is, I like to go to jails, you know, because at, like, six months sober, somebody in my, in, in, in my home group in Leone at the time, he was like, fill out this piece of paper, and he's like, I'm going to take you to the Bergen County Jail. I'm like, I don't know if I want to go there. He's like, fill out the paper. And I, and I did, and I remember shaking and being scared when, when the door opened because, like, I was just skirting the issue at the time. You know what I mean? That was still waiting for me. But I also remember the feeling of being able to tell people that, like, by by following a few of the, by following a few of the suggestions, I was doing all right, and they were going to open the door and let me go home. You know, and I'll never forget that first time hearing a door slide open and not have not having to worry about like when's the, when's the court date you know what i mean what are the charges any of those things i knew where i had been i knew what i had done and i was going home and uh i've continued to try to do those things because uh i get much more out of it than like than than i could ever give you know like i honestly do those are the things that uh i it helps me, you know. The whole reason I do it, I'd love to tell you that, like, I'm some kind of reformist, you know what I mean? I think I got some great thing, you know, that's going to uh, set corrections on its ear, and, you know, I'm going to be able to reach people, you know, and I got a cure for, like, what else, juvenile delinquents and things like that. I don't. I, my, still to this day, the biggest answer I have is what to do after you've gotten in trouble. I don't have a lot of ideas <laughs> on how to stay out of trouble. You know what I mean? I haven't gotten in trouble thanks to the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. You know what I mean? But, like, I had to go, I had to go through all that I have gone through to get to where I am now, you know? And uh, that's why, I, like, I, I, tell, I tell people when I try to carry this message that the thing you have to remember is the only difference between you and I is I have not picked up a drink in a while. But I have... If I were if I were to pick up a drink, you could be sitting where I am right now, and I'll be sitting there in the orange in the orange jumpsuit like you. And I know this for myself because I've been there, telling you that it's all it's all a bunch of malarkey. You know what I mean? To use to use 
I know we don't approve of obscenity and things like that here. Like, that's not, but that would be me. You know what I mean? As soon as I start drinking, I'll deny everything. You're like, and I don't want to deny any of the things I know today. Like, you know what I mean? I feel really good about this. And I hope that, like, I hope that somebody is, like, the biggest thing I hope they get out of it is, like, if that little, if that little SOB could get it, so can I. You know what I mean? Like, if, if, if that's, if that's what it takes, I hope that, like, that's, they can use that to their benefit. You know what I mean? They can use my experience to their benefit. You know what I mean? They can see something in me that they can, they, they can authenticate some part of their story by what I'm, by what I'm telling them in my story and how, like, all, all the lengths that I've had to go to to be willing to, like, f trust God, clean house, and help others, you know? Like, to and, that's the biggest thing and uh now like i got here's a funny i'm going to tell this story uh they talk about the trips like the police and court and things like that right and uh i try to i got a guy and him and i the part he didn't understand when he asked me to sponsor him is like i'm not going anywhere i don't whatever you do you did it you know what i mean but like i'll be here you know what i mean when you're ready I'll, I'll I'll help you. You know what I mean. Like, I I believe like I have to stick by people. You know what I mean. Like, it doesn't matter what happens. The idea is to just keep trying. And uh, one evening, I got to meet like I got to meet I got to meet the police. You know, and uh, I show up. They're in the driveway because I had been speaking to the guy on the phone, and I was like, "Where are you?" I'm like, "Just get home." You know what I mean. And uh, he had quite an elaborate plan himself, and I was like, I really wouldn't, in my experience, I wouldn't try that. But you know what I mean? If you think you could, that's, I, if I were you, go home. And when I get there, there's a couple of squad cars, and uh, I walk up, and uh, like I said, I used to have a real, I had a real nice ponytail, you know, but I decided, like, it's time to clean up my act. And I come walking up, and they're like, who are you? Well, I'm like, well, I'm a friend, you know, and uh, they're like, oh, yeah, I, I miss." Go go ahead in the house, right? And I go in there, and I'm trying to sort through the details, talking with the guy's father. Like it says, I try to be friends with the family and explain, like, what's going on and uh, see what I could do. And uh, I'm offering some suggestions on this, and uh, now we have to take a ride. I'm like, all right, well, where are you going to take them? Like, what's going on, right? And uh, they're like, we're going to take them over to the local we're going to hold him there for the, for the municipal for the town where he committed the offense. They're going to come get him. I'm like, all right, I'll come over there. And uh, I'm sitting in the front room in, in the police station, which is quite a, that's a, a nice feeling. You know what I mean? To know that I can go home from there too. But uh, the, the cop walks in and he looks at me, right? I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not here for me. He's in the back. Right. And, uh, I hear the conversation, right? I hear the guy talking, and I'm like, man, you should really, like, he's actually promoting his business, which was, like, a good thing, but he's talking to the cops, right? And then, then he's like, oh, yeah, that guy's my sponsor from AA. I'm like, it's an anonymous program. Don't you get it? But uh, it, that was, it's, it's one of those funny stories that I have regarding, like, I don't care. I can I, I don't care who knows, you know what I mean? I tell you my last name because like if I was to just go by like Tattoo Steven, you could never find me. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm only anonymous outside of the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. I am here like this is what gave me my life, you know? And uh I hope if somebody you know what I mean? I, like, I believe that thing about responsibility. I'm responsible whenever anybody anywhere reaches out. I want the hand to be there. If it's my hand, somebody else's hand, like, but that's what I'm here for, to try to, car to, try to carry the message, you know. And I have, a, I have another funny story. The guy couldn't be here tonight because uh, our, me and him are sponsored by the same guy, and uh, he's going to hear Lester speak, and... Uh, he this guy was having a he was having a hard time and I went I went by his house one morning to see if he was all right you know like I would just stop by on my way to a meeting just to let him know you know like if you want to uh, 
I'll help you, you know, but you got you got to tell me, you know, I just stopped by to say hello or whatever. And he wasn't there. And uh, the wheels in my head start spinning. I'm like, he could, you know, a lot of bad things could have happened to him. I don't know what happened. I went to, I went to ask his mother, have you seen him? Because I'm like, the door's open and he's not there. And she's like, uh, he's supposed to be there. I'm like, well, he's not. And uh, he turned up later that day. He had gotten in a little altercation, and he had some things to straighten out with the local constable himself. But he got out, and he called me. And uh, he's like, you know, I think I'm going to try the dollar-a-day plan. I'm like, yeah, that's really good. You know what I mean? You seem to be having a lot of success at it. Why don't you try that, right? And uh, I'm like, maybe you should think about, like, going away to have the fog lifted. And uh, he so, – the Mike offered him a ride. The guy I sponsored, he's going to give the guy a ride because he's going to go to his sister's house. This is his plan. He thinks he'll go to his sister's house, and he'll uh, – He'll, you know, he'll get straightened up, right? He'll get a couple of days off. He'll, you know what I mean? And then he'll come back to meetings. So I'm like, that's a good plan that you're going to give him a ride. But I'm like, you better wait for me because uh, we had done a little bit of legwork ahead of time, contacted a place, and we found out we could get him in there. And, uh, you know, I'd been talking to him all along. And uh, we get him in the car, and he's like, oh, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, I'm taking a ride with with, with, with Mike, you know, we're going to, we're going to give you a ride up to your sisters. And I'm like, we got to wait. Cause we had discussed, we got about like 30, I probably about 45 minutes of the garden state parkway. And I'm like, uh, you know, you're not going to your sister's house, right? He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I, I did. I'm like, there's no more I can do for you. I am like, you have placed yourself beyond, beyond like the the scope of like what any reasonable person can really do for you, you know, what, what, so like, I'm like, you better get some help. And then, then maybe once the fog is lifted, we could help you, you know? And, uh, he's like, I'm not going. And, uh, I got my, I got my little book with me and I'm, I start to read some things to him because he, he like me has good memorization skills and he can remember a lot of things. And he's like, you know what I'm going to do with that book? I'm like, no, what are you going to do with it? He's like, I'm going to stick it up your, uh, I'm like, you know what? It says right here, you may have to fight if he wants to get violent. You know what I mean? I'm like, it's in the book. You know what I mean? And like, it is there. I hope, you know, and he, we let, we laugh about that today because he, uh, he celebrated six months last night, you know? And, uh, it's one of those things, like, I didn't do anything. Like, he likes to try to – I didn't do anything. He likes to try to give me credit for things. I don't – I didn't do anything. I was – I just carried the message. You know what I mean? The message isn't mine. You know what I mean? I have – I have my personal experience with it, but the message is the same. Like, and he uh, – he, he got – hopefully he's – he's got it, you know, like he's, he's, he's on the right path. And, uh, like I said, as much as like, I love, it has nothing to do with me. It's just a matter of, uh, being willing to follow a few simple rules, you know? And, uh, I was reading things to him and he was like, he, he, he liked what I read to him. You could ask him. He he said he would never get in a car with me again. If we were going anywhere, he's driving. And, uh, the funny story about it is that he tells he tells this story to everybody now about how two guys offered to take him to his sister's house, but somehow he never wound up at his sister's house, you know. But he started back on the road to recovery, you know, and uh, like things like that. That's all part is, and uh, I have like a lot of personal experiences, like. I've told the stories that these practicing these principles in all my affairs, you know what I mean? Like I'm not up here to complain. I got a pretty good lot in life. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but I've had things, I've had some really bad things happen both to myself in sobriety. Like I, I think I told you the story of laying in the street from a motorcycle accident and, uh, just being like whatever's going to happen is going to happen. There's nothing that I can do 
Like, you know, and there's no need to get all worked up. Like, honestly, original, my original thought was I'm going to find that little SOB that did that to me and uh, lay a beating on him. But when I, when I honestly thought about it, you know what? It was just carry some type, some type of message. And uh, my wife has had some severe health problems, and uh, the people that are close to me, like, they've, they've helped me. You know what I like? Lester, this guy, the, the the guy I was speaking to, one night I'm at work and my wife's got to go for emergency surgery and she wouldn't have the hospital call me to tell me. I come to find out from one of the nurses on duty that my wife had been taken for emergency surgery and she was she was actually in the operating room as I was speaking to the nurse. And uh, these guys read the big book to me on the phone, you know. We started, we started with the forwards, and we just kept reading. And, uh, you know, like, they were there. I had to go to the hospital numerous times. Guys went with me. You know what I mean? Like, they were there just, just to be there, you know? I've always said it like this, that uh, my whole story revolves around, like, camaraderie, brotherhood. You know, like, I was, that's the thing I was always striving for. I was looking to be part of part of the crew, you know, the gang, whatever you want to call it, and uh, I did a lot of stupid things to try to impress people to be a part of something, and uh, like, the people that are my friends today, you know, they're my real friends, and it has nothing to do with any of the things that I do, have, or even say, you know, they're my friends because, like, we have something in common, like they tell you. We're like the passengers of a great vessel after after a shipwreck, you know. We're bound together by this program, by uh, the basic idea of one guy helping another guy in the hopes that I myself might stay sober. But, like, I know this, that I can count on these people, and they can count on me, you know, because they mention the things in there about, uh, like, Sometimes my wife is not real happy with Alcoholics Anonymous because I do spend a lot of time, sometimes too much time, to be completely honest about it, trying to, ca trying to be helpful to other people, and I lose sight of that, like, I also have to practice all these principles in my home, you know what I mean? My wife's never, like, my wife's not, not in the fellowship. She's not, you know, she doesn't, and it's not her responsibility to understand, like, I have to I have to be the one that understands. And I got to remember that I have a wife and that, uh, you know what I mean, I'm blessed to have all these things. And I got to put as much effort into those things as sometimes I do going to work, going to AA. Like, that's a big thing. How do, how do How's my home life? You know what I mean? And I'll tell you this. Like, sometimes I'm a really good member of Alcoholics Anonymous, but there are times – I'll never be husband of the year, do you know what I mean? And uh, I understand that. But we have, we have, my wife, and the other part of it is, my wife is extremely supportive of this. The guys I sponsor now, they come to my house to read the book, to sit down and talk, you know what I mean? I have a whole bunch, my wife is, is very supportive of what I do in recovery. Even like a lot of the trips that I've taken, like, uh, we went to the Southern 500 in Darlington, South Carolina, Labor Day weekend. Everybody that went was was in the fellowship, you know. It was my sponsor, a guy I sponsor, his son, our wives, and, uh, like, that's all part of it. I can go anywhere. I can do anything as long as I am in fit spiritual condition. I'm And, like, like it says, you know what, I don't have it knocked, but I'm not afraid of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, as long I can, I'm all right. You know what I mean? Like, and I, I, I'm really not tempted by it. And when I really sit down and, and think about it, wherever I go or whatever I do, like, I do recoil from it like a hot flame because uh, it's never got me anything. You know what I mean? It's gotten me a lot of heartache and misery, you know? And, like, the, 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 the happiness, the joy I have, like, all those things are a byproduct of uh, being in this program, you know. And uh, 
that's the biggest, like the biggest gifts, you know. Like I said, I was I was sober almost six years when I got married. You know what I mean? And uh, trust me, I never thought, like I said, I never pictured myself having a yard. You know what I mean? Cutting grass or uh, taking care of a home. You know what I mean? Or doing any of those things. You know, that was all square stuff to me. You know what I mean? That was not cool. You know what I mean? It's a lot cooler, like to be to live on your, you know what I mean, to live in a floppy room and have a really nice scooter and just, like, you know, like, th that was my ambition in life, you know, like, to have the nicest looking bike. And I can tell you this about having the nicest looking bike. I had a show bike at one time, and uh, I couldn't stop shaking to turn a wrench to, to tighten up an oil leak. That's where alcohol took me, you know what I mean? My bike sat there leaking oil, and I couldn't, I couldn't move to fix it like I couldn't move that far from from what I was doing to even go look at it you know what I mean and uh like by by living this life one day at a time you know by uh getting over this hopeless state of mind and body like by by these three by these three steps you know what I mean like trying to maintain what I have where I've come to like by getting over the obsession by by getting over me, you know what I mean? Like they tell me, alcohol is but a symptom, you know what I mean? Like I'm the problem. By by getting over myself, like my world opened up, you know what I mean? It's it's a big place, and I have my place in it. And uh, there's a couple of things that uh, there's like I'm an I, I'm an uncle, I'm a godfather, you know what I mean? All those things. I'm a son, like, I'm a son today, you know? And here's a big thing I have, like, one of the benefits of this. Like, I told you, like, part of, like, making amends to my father was I had to, like, admit that he knew a hell of a lot more than I had ever known about living, you know? But um, I went to Las Vegas, Nevada in uh, February this year with my parents, you know? I, like... I'm able to do those things. I'm able to put other people like to, to put other people first. Like you know, I mean, trust me. I wanted to go to the, to, to the race in Las Vegas, Nevada, but I, you know what I mean. It wasn't like I was able to go with them and share things with them. And when I go there, like I have a genuine interest in things that go on now. Before I used to listen very politely, and then hightail it for like whatever it is I wanted to do. Today, like I. I'm I'm a member of my family, you know what I mean? Like I'm a member of life, you know what I mean? That's the biggest that's the biggest gift. I'm one among many, you know what I mean? But I'm a part of the whole, you know, like I have my part, everybody has their part, and I can be respective of like other people's parts in this, you know? And uh I have a sense of belonging to like the human race. Something like Honestly, I didn't want to belong to society, to be really honest. When I when I showed up here, like, I was society's problem, and they could do whatever they wished to try to to fix me, but I wasn't going to conform, you know. And today, like, conformity is not such a bad thing. I don't always conform, you know, and uh, – but I try. And uh, I realize that – I realize what I, what I am right now, like, what I was, what I am right now, and what I can be if I continue to do the work that is necessary, you know, if I do these things, if I continue to keep my contact with my higher power, to do his work, to serve him and my fellows, like, I got a shot at a pretty good life, you know. And uh, I always like to say, I say it like this, like, if I was to win the big game one night, right, and you saw me in the paper, you know, like, I still got to be here tomorrow. You know what I mean? I got to be here for the guy coming through the door. You know what I mean? I got to be here because, like, Alcoholics Anonymous got me to where I am. And if by some by some twist of fate I was to wind up sleeping under a bridge somewhere, if I was to lose everything that I hold near and dear to me, whatever it might be, I got to come to AA because, like, I I cannot solve my own problems. You know what I mean? And uh, the people here put me on the path to the solution to my problem. You know what I mean? They've taught me to live in the solution, how, like, how, how to get over 
how to get over me and uh, how hard I think life is, you know. And uh, there's, like, I like to, uh, I know Dr. Bot, like, I like to give credit for the four reasons, like, you know what I mean? I'd love to tell you, like, the, the four reasons I come here, you know what I mean? Dr. Bob said them. Sense of duty, you know what I mean? Like, I have an obligation to Alcoholics Anonymous. I have an obligation, like it was explained to me, the most selfish thing that I could do would be to get my life back and not be here to help somebody else. It's a pleasure. I like I love coming to AA. You know what I mean? Because like where else am I gonna meet other other rummies, other guys to work with? You know what I mean? Nowhere. You know what I mean? Like this this is quite a hotbed of activity for me. You know what I mean? Like where else can I go? You know what I mean? Like where where else can I work with others? You know what I mean? Where can I get where can I get the help I need and help help others? By doing this, I'm repaying the debt to all of those that have given it to me. You know what I mean? Because I wish I could say that it was only one person, you know, but it's not. It's everybody I've ever met as I've trudged the road of happy destiny. And there's there's it's just too numerous like I to remember, you know, like to mention. But like that's I'm I'm paying that debt back to somebody, you know what I mean? Like that's that's part of that's part of the recovery unity service, right? The the triangle, the legacy, the whole not, that's part of it. That's what I have to remember. And like it says, po- insurance against a possible slip back into alcoholism. Like I'm taking out a little bit of insurance by like doing the things I do to help myself to stay sober for like one more day. You know what I mean? To give myself. I got. I don't even know how many hours I got to go after here because I'm working seven and I'm working overnight. You know what I mean? I'll be working until seven o'clock in the morning. I I got a long and I you know what the nice thing about it is I got time to talk to my higher power, like, you know, I have a lot of time, there's like a lot of quiet time, and uh, there's, it's just, it's one of those things, you know, like, I have a contact, and whenever I want to, like, they tell me I got to be seeking them, you know, like, I always try to tell people that, like, uh, the sky's not going to open up for you either, you know what I mean, it tell, they, they're pretty explicit about how to find them, right? You have to set forth on a journey, but you'll find them if you're looking for them because, like, I like the end of that story. I like the end of Dr. Bob's Nightmare because uh, I like the ration card thing because I borrowed quite a few of them myself. That's how I really figure, like, my drinking career went. Friends of mine are no longer here. I use their cards. You know what I mean? I've had drinks on their cards. You know what I mean? My card was probably empty a long time ago. But uh, and now I am living on borrowed time. And then he goes on to explain, like, well, no matter what I may think I am, you know what I mean, atheist, agnostic, super intelligent, you know what I mean. To and I was when I got here, I was too intelligent to grasp what was in that book because I had read it and I knew what the words said. So you couldn't teach me anything. I was too intelligent. Today, I like to learn, you know what I mean? I'm interested in learning, being teachable. And, uh, like, they, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple. Abandon yourself to your Heavenly Father, and he will not let you down, you know? And uh, the way I've abandoned myself to my higher power, as I understand them, is through the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know? Like, and all I can say is, like, I'm getting... I thank all those people that uh, went that that started this. You know what I mean? And the simplicity of this whole thing, how simple it really is. You know, like uh, it's it's amazing the the benefits I've reaped from what what these guys uh what these guys did. You know, and like when I really look at it, like how I can I can authenticate everything I've ever lived by the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know what I mean? And uh, I said this, like, I'm no lawyer, you know what I mean? I, 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 I have some knowledge of the legal system, and I've never played the stock market, you know what I mean? Never been interested in big business or how it runs. But, like, I understand. Bill Wilson told a lot of my story in his story in that book. And uh, from there, like, every, that book... Like I said, 
is the basic text to, to show me how to get over a hopeless state of mind and body, the steps necessary to recover. And uh, I hope I, I carried some kind of message. You know, I hope uh, I, my higher power used me to the best of his advantage, and I'd like to thank you for having me here. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.